This past week, the District Advisory Board had their meeting in Clendenin, and they viewed the devastation that uh, has been left by the flood. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, a member of the advisory board uh, in our church. Brenda Bauer is only the second lady that's ever been voted on the advisory board, her and Elsie ours. And as she viewed that devastation with the rest of the board, she came back and said, honey, what you saw on TV, don't even scratch the surface of the devastation that those people are experiencing. So we as a church are going to help them in two ways. This morning we're going to be taking an offering for the flood victims. If you're making out a check, make it out to the Hurricane First Church of the Nazarene, and we'll see that it's all compiled along with the loose money, and it gets directly to either the LaRue's, the, the Parsonage family, or the Clendenin Church of the Nazarene Church. Those are the two areas that we're going to be concentrating in. Also, when we meet with the church board, we're going to be viewing our finances and making a donation as a church to them. So uh, we're going to be helping. You're going to be helping in two ways. This offering and also some of your tithes and offerings will be going to help them in the devastation. Any questions about the offering this morning? I'm going to ask Brenda to come. She viewed the devastation and I asked her if she would uh, speak to that. Actually, he's, I thought he changed his mind. I didn't, I, so anyway. Um, if you, and you know what, I, I have to tell you this morning, I'm so proud of Hurricane First Church of the Nazarene. You guys have done so much. And I just want to say, if you have been to Clendenin or any of the flood areas, and would you stand? Let's see all of our workers. I know a lot of you went this week, and I am so proud of my church. Awesome. Let's give them a hand. As Pastor said, we did... Uh, spend some time up there this week with the advisory board. We met with the disaster relief um, crew who's working there and there are two really great crews there right now and uh, they have a lot before them though and um, one of the things that uh, is so sad is the homes that are, are just gone. And uh, we are fortunate that the Clendenin church pastor's home, um, the shell is, is is there and they're going to be able to just use that shell and rebuild the inside which is a great blessing and they've already gone in and gutted all of that out but it was my understanding that the LaRue's lost everything even furniture because um, one of the flood workers told me that even though you might be able to salvage some of that stuff that even as it dries out there's still bacteria like in the wood and the things and so they they pretty much lost absolutely everything and so we want to take a love offering for the LaRue's of course and just try to help them I mean can you imagine losing everything in your home they got their vehicles out and that was all they got out and the reason one of the reasons for that I'll share is that Pastor LaRue was over helping a neighbor try to get all of their stuff off, off, up off the floor so the water didn't get in their stuff and by the time he got back to his house, it was too late to do anything other than get his vehicles out. So uh, I know this morning that the Lord is, has blessed us tremendously. And so I would ask each one of you today just to pray about it. And, and let's give a great love offering this morning 
to the LaRue's and for the work there in Clendenin. And uh, I know that uh, they will appreciate everything we do. And I think, again, Pastor Mark's going back to Mara, going to Clay. And so we're still collecting stuff. If you have, if you're able to bring in non-perishable food items or clothing items, the list is the same. And you know, you may go today and they'll say, oh, we don't need water, we've got water. But you know what, next week they'll need water. This is not gonna be something that ends in a month. It's gonna be months on end before those people are gonna be reestablished. So there may not be a need today for something you bring, but prom I promise you there'll be a, a need next week or the following week for that item. So let's keep bringing things in. Thanks everyone. If I can have our ushers come, we will receive that offering for the flood victims. Any and all of you who can stand this morning, if you're able to stand, would you stand as we start our service with a song talking about the freedom and liberties that we have in this country. My country, tis of thee.
brought good news to the poor. He came to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty yes. to yes. the captive, and he opened the prisons of those who are bound. I'm glad I serve that yes. kind of a God yes. this morning. Yes. Amen. Girls, start with that chorus.
as we go to prayer, we're going to just sing the chorus of this old song. Isn't it good to know that Jesus cares? Yes, he does. He cares what we're facing and what we're going through. He cared enough to give his life so that we would have the freedoms we enjoy today. Amen. said he careth for you yes, yes. and let's go praising and thanking God if you're visiting because of the holidays with your family uh, we're glad that you're here and glad you've chosen to worship with us we have Roger's uh, granddaughters with us and, and uh, Caleb Hathaway has decided to come back home and, and good to have him and, Angie and Nancy's mom, and just uh, family, nothing like family. That's right. My, uh, my boys celebrated the fourth yesterday with my brother, who has just lost his wife, and they're trying to help him, and my brother said, uh, Phil, you'd been awful proud of your boys, and I said, why is that? He said, they brought food, they fixed it. I didn't have to do a thing. God. They brought rainbow trout, <laughs> steak. And he said, most of all, when they got ready to leave, he said, uh, Tony, your oldest boy, said, let's gather around for prayer. And he said, Phil, he prayed. He's in church. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't let him pray awesome. like that if they're not in church. Praise God. Prayer changes things, doesn't Amen. it? Yes, yes. You know one of the reasons he done that? They never leave the parsonage. I'll say, Logan, do you know what we have to do? We have to pray, Papa. Logan, do you want to know you pray back? <laughs> Teach him early. Right. Before it hits. That prayer really does change things. Because it changes people. I doubt if there's a person here this morning that has any idea 
of the many people that prayed for them before they were saved. Many and most of them may be in heaven. But nevertheless, they prayed. So we're thankful for them. And then, uh, well, I'll tell you, the Lord just keeps blessing and, and blessing and blessing our church. We've got a pastor here this morning from Nigeria. Amen. Isn't that great? God bless you. Amen. We're going to ask the choir to come and sing that chorus. We want to open our family altar. If the Lord has answered a prayer for you, or you need a special prayer answer, feel free to come before the pastor prays. In your prayers, remember Rachel Berry. She has surgery this week. Remember John Gray's uh, brother and son. And then also Steve Johnson lost a sister this week, Imogene Lovejoy. Her uh, funeral will be at the Chapman Funeral Home. Visitation on Wednesday at 10, funeral at 11. So remember the Johnson family in your prayers as we pray. Remember our servicemen and their families and remember America today. Let's remember America. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning in this worship service for a nation under God. We pray that, Lord, through the situations and circumstances that are taking place in our land, it would bring our nation and our leaders to their knees and bring them back to the faith of our forefathers. We pray for those that we have mentioned, those who are written in the bulletin, those that are facing surgeries, those who are recovering from illnesses, those that are struggling and fighting terminal illness. You're the great physician. You're still on the throne. You do all things well. And Lord, there's nothing too hard or impossible for thee. So we pray for those that are praying this morning at this altar. Many of them are praying for a son or for a daughter, for a brother, for a sister, for a mom, for a dad, for a companion. Lord, you know, even before we ask, you're still in the miracle working business. Help us to place our faith and our trust in a God that never fails. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Well, July is a busy, busy month. Many activities going on following the service this morning. will be our Sunday school picnic. We'll uh, pray over the food as we close, and, and you can go right out those doors, and they'll be ready for you to eat. Isn't that great? Yeah. Sounds good to me. And then please uh, don't forget, no evening service here tonight. And uh, annual reports for the previous church year, and it was a good one, will be given Wednesday evening by the pastor and the department heads and the head trustee and the head steward. Many times people wanting to know uh, where your money goes. Well, you'll find out Wednesday night. All the avenues where we direct the finances of the kingdom. Men's breakfast is Saturday, July the 9th at uh, 8.30, so keep that in mind. Camp meeting, July the 10th through the 17th at Summersville, so uh, take note of that. Then Revival in America tour, Sunday, August the 21st at our evening service, 6 p.m., the Toller Brothers and the Guardians will be singing in that service, and Dr. Stan Toller will be preaching. So that'll be a wonderful service. Our board meeting will be moved back to July the 19th. That's not this coming Tuesday, but the next, due to the camp meeting. So please keep that in mind. And then those interested in... Uh, Riding uh, on uh, the float or walking beside it, uh, we are going to have a, a float from our church in the parade Monday. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, make sure you wear your red t-shirt, Church Alive, it's worth the drive, Huntington, or er, <laughs> Hurricane, First Church of the Nazarene. No, I've got Huntington on my mind. And uh, be uh, the church will you you'll meet at 2:30 Monday to ride the bus to the parade. So if you'd like to be a part of that, a lot of things going, a lot of activities. If you don't write them down, you'll miss some of them. But uh, please take note of the many activities that are coming your way. You want to be involved in many of those things uh, that you can be. Ushers come at this time, and we'll receive our regular Sunday evening, your Sunday morning ties and off. I don't know what's the matter with me today. This is, this is Sunday morning. Isn't it? Art, would you bless the offering? Yes. 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 Amen.
morning. That's 
If you see a man in sandals, ask him what's his name. If he tells you it's Jesus, tell him you're so glad he came. Tell him you know someone that still calls him Lord. And just send him on to me. That's the man I'm looking for. (laughs) Amen. What a day. What a day that's going to be. I talk to my brother twice every day. And uh, he never fails to mention in the conversation that uh, when he gets up, he goes over and kisses his wife's picture before he starts his day. I said, big brother, what's it going to be like when you kiss her face to face again? Oh, he said, I can't wait for that day to happen. He said, this old world don't mean anything to me. What a day that's going to be. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Amos, the 8th chapter, verses 11 through 13. And even in the Old Testament, the prophet is proclaiming what we're living in these last days. It's amazing to me the instruction and the influence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to take these prophets of old and have them predict and write about the day and age that we'd be living in and to hit the nail on the head. Stand with me as we read uh, Amos, the 8th chapter, verses 11 through 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east, They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Heavenly Father, help us tonight, this morning. May the anointing of God be upon the message of the hour that you've given. And we'll give you the praise. For we pray and ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. It's ironic in the land of the plenty and the richest land on earth that America would face a famine. In the Old Testament to the New, there were 400 years of darkness where God never spake and neither a prophet wrote and people begin to question begin to wonder and they would ask is there any word from the Lord they were seeking in that silence, a word from God. There were 400 years of famine until finally Christ entered the scene and God once again began to deal with the hearts and the lives of men and women. The Bible is prevalent today. I listen to many messages before I come to church on Sunday. 
by Dr. Charles Stanley, Dr. David Jeremiah, and some others. And so the Word of God is going out by TV and by radio, and it's on computer. But who would ever guess that in these last days that we would experience in America a famine for God in three ways. And I'm going to name them. I never will forget that I stepped out of the pulpit one Sunday morning and a person that was visiting our church, and we have many that come to visit, said, Pastor, I'm backslidden. And I searched all over this valley. to hear a preacher preach a message that is anointed by God that I could sense that I'd heard a word from God. Big tears ran down his face. He said, I didn't go to the altar, but I'll be back. I feel that I've heard from God. When's the last time uh, it, it knocked my, almost knocked my socks off when I read the statistics lately where George Barna had wrote in his Gallup poll that 70% of the people that attend church on any given Sunday leave feeling they've never heard or experienced God in that service. I don't believe I'd go back. But we're living in that day and age where entertainment is taken over. Biblical preaching has become a thing of the past. Truth has fallen in the streets. A nation that was founded upon God and spiritual freedom. A famine in America in three ways this morning. There's a famine for the Word of God. There's a famine for the Word of God. It's still inspired, incorruptible, inerrant. We don't need to change it. We don't need to rearrange it. We need to read and pray and ask for understanding by the Holy Spirit and practice it and live it just like it is. But there's a famine for the Word of God. Also in that Gallup poll, that it said seven out of ten people in America that was asked to name at least three of the Gospels couldn't do it. They didn't know the names of the Gospels in the Bible. Bible on every hand. Yet there's a famine in America for the Word of God. Without the Word of God, there's no freedom. The Word of God is what makes us free and sets us free. It's impossible to enslave a Bible reading people. And that's why we need to read the Word of Truth. Bible preaching keeps a person alert to the freedoms that God gives when he sets the captive free. 
a famine for the Word of God. Without the Word of God, people have no foundation. Their foundation is faulty. It will not stand. Jesus proclaimed it when he said, there's a storm coming. And it's an awful storm. And I will liken it to two men who built their houses. They sensed that something was coming, that something was wrong, and that they needed to prepare. And one built his house the easy way, the smooth way. What was right in his own eyes. And the other built his house upon a rock. And he dug deep and built a firm and solid foundation. They both looked okay. You couldn't tell by the naked eye that anything was wrong until the storm came. And when the storm came, the house built upon sand, the house built upon entertainment, the the house built on contemporary feel-good religion. It fell, and great was the fall of it. But the winds came, and the rains descended upon the house built upon the rock and that house stood still and steady because it was built upon a rock that rock's Jesus he's the one that rock is he's the only one be sure this morning be very sure That you're building your spiritual life and your eternal destiny upon the Word of God. It will not change. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. They can laugh at the Word. They can make fun of the word all they want to. But God said, my word will not return unto me void. It will accomplish that which I have set it out to do. My father-in-law got perturbed at me one day. You know, I'm a preacher. And preachers preach. And boy, if there was ever one that needed it at that time, he did. So I just, Brenda was in the other room, I just let him have it. And he didn't like it. (laughs) And I've got a good father-in-law, let me say that. But he looked at me and he said, uh, Phil, I'm awful glad you're not my judge. And I looked at him and I said, Dad, I am too, because if I was your judge, you'd be in trouble. But I said, do you know who your judge is? And I had the word laying there by my chair and I picked it up. I said, right here. One day you'll die. You'll stand before God. And it's not what Phil says. It's not what Green says. It's what the book says. Trust me, Dad, on occasion, I read this book. And I know pretty much what it says. I may forget the Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, but I can still quote a lot of Scripture. And there's a famine in America 
for the Word of God. Without the Word of God, there's no faith. Our spiritual life is built on faith. We're saved by faith. We're kept by faith. We're healed by faith. We live by faith. We go to heaven by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Well, how do you get it? Preacher, faith. I'm glad you asked. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach unless he be sent? Make sure in these last days, Israel was led astray because their priests and their leaders erred and led them astray. If you've got a leader or you've got a pastor that preaches the inspired word of God today under the anointing and in truth, you're very fortunate. I was reading a a paper and I was tempted to have uh, Brenda put it in the bulletin because I fully agreed with it. But I, I thought you might think I was bragging. It said, what doctor has a room full of patients, 250 of them, with all different kinds of ailments, and he's the only one in the office that has to treat them medically and fix them. And when you think about that doctor, think about your pastor. The buck stops back there. There's a famine for the word of God. There, number two, there's a famine for the ways of God. People want to do what's right in their own eyes. That won't get you to heaven. Well, preacher, I, I treat everybody fair. That won't get you to heaven either. Might keep you out of jail, but it won't get you to heaven. Well, what will get me to heaven, Jesus? As far as I know, it's not changed. If it has, nobody's informed or told me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You've got to go through him. He's the straight. He's the narrow way. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other way under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The news commentators, and I wish they'd let me talk on one of them TV shows. The news commentators keep asking our top-notch preachers if Jesus is the only way to heaven. And uh, they're better politicians than they are preachers. They skirt all around that. And they don't give a direct answer. Leading people to believe whatever they want to. There's only one preacher that I listen to on there when Larry King asked him directly, Do you believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven? He looked at Larry King and he said, Mr. King, it don't make any difference what I believe. 
It's what the Bible says. So I'll answer your question this way. And he answered it rightly. He said, here's what the Bible says. Beside me, there is no Savior. That I'm the way. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Mr. King didn't know what to say to that. How can you argue with the internal, eternal, infallible Word of God? I remember one time a man that was working on our church came back into my office and, and one of our men put him up to it. He didn't believe the way we did. We're holiness people. We believe you have to live a godly life to get to heaven. We don't believe you can cuss, smoke, steal, and, and do anything you want to just because you saved 20 years ago and still be right. We believe it changes you. We believe you've changed. We believe you're different. We believe that old things, you can say those things a little louder if you want to. We believe that old things pass away and all things become new. And when you get old time, Holy Ghost, heartfelt, sin killing, devil defeating, bought by the blood, Bible believing and baptized in the Holy Ghost uh, salvation, that you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're born anew. You're born again. There's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. And it's all because of Calvary. It's the way of the few. Many people say, well, oh my. If you preach it straight like that, and it is a straight way. It's not crooked. It's not bent. Uh, You ought to have been raised when I was a kid. I'll be 65 next week. When I was a kid, uh, if you shouted and jumped, the preacher was up here eyeballing you. What for? He wanted to make sure you walked straight when you hit the ground. She was prayed up, paid up, and ready to go up. What if I wasn't, preacher? He said, quit shouting in my church. You don't think they did that? I had a guy shout all over one Sunday morning. And he's living with one of my trustee's daughters right next to the church. They weren't married. He was good at waving hankies. He was a healthy, healthy fella, so he was loud when he shouted. And I told him the next day, what can I do for you, preacher? I said, you can get right with God and quit living with that woman you're living with over there or quit shouting in my church. Well, he turned around and went back to the house and he quit coming to church. So he quit shouting because he quit coming. And the trustee said, uh, do you know you hurt Randy's feelings this week? I said, do you know he hurt mine Sunday? Well, what's that all about? I looked straight at that trustee, and he was a good man. I said, I told him to quit living with your daughter. They're not married. Or quit shouting in this church. God bless you, Pastor. I think a lot more of you now. I've told him that a hundred times. He didn't get it. But believe me, when you told him, he got it. There's a famine for the ways of God. The disciples that heard it from Jesus' lips said, this is a hard saying. And they turned around and walked with him no more. They wouldn't follow him. If they had to live like that, and we've had a lot of people quit this church. 
because of my preaching. So I guess if you want to run 500, you'll have to get rid of me and Brenda. There's a famine for the way of the Lord because the way of the Lord is narrow and it's holy. It's in harmony with God and his word. See, you can't fall out with your family and not speak and think you're right. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. That you think you can hold hatred or bitterness or envy or strife. I don't care what they've done or how long they've done it. God forgave you. You wasn't an angel when he forgave you. And he expects you to forgive your brothers and sisters. A famine for the word of God. It's honest. You know, if Christians are anything, they're honest. I don't know how many people have told me lately, oh, preacher, do you really believe it's wrong to tell a little white lie? I've never seen one of them. I've seen white truth, but a lie is a lie. And I'll throw this in, it won't cost us nothing. To willingly deceive somebody, you don't even have to tell a lie. If you make them think something's right when it's not, you've lied. But the way of the Lord is an honest way. You get religion, you take things back that you stole. You don't steal no more. You found a better way. And last of all, but not least, there's a famine for the will of the Lord. Are you living in his will? If you're not, you're not going to go to heaven. Only those that do the will of the Father. It's not the Lord's will that you should perish. There's not, it's not God's will that any one of you today that I'm speaking to would be eternally lost. It's appointed unto all of us that we might be saved. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Walk in the light as He is in the light and you'll have fellowship with Him and with your brothers and sisters. And the blood of Jesus Christ will keep you, convert you, and cleanse you from all sin. Are you living in the center of God's will? Are you doing anything and everything that God calls you to do? Many and most are not. Many have some secret sin, have some habit, have a problem with tithing and money. Many are outside of the ark of safety. The will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. Now we're going to pray in just a moment, but we want you to think before we do whether or not you're living in the will of God. Shall we stand? Heavenly Father, as they're contemplating where they stand spiritually, where they're while they are examining their life, if there is an area in their life outside of the will of God, help them to know it and help them to come and get it taken care of. 
With every head bowed, no one looking around, no singing. Step out right now. If you need to come to this altar, you say, you know, there's something I need to pray about. God's will for my life. We want you to come right now. While there's opportunity, while there's a chance, the Word of God, the way of God, the will of God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this service. Bless this food to nourish our body and bless the Sunday school picnic and those who have prepared it. Bless those that can stay and those that can't. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. File right out those doors and they're ready for you to eat.